Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're doing a painting based on Banjo-Kazooie. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I've wanted to do another Banjo painting for a while, and now that he's been added to Smash, I thought it was a really good time to do so. And I really loved how they added Spiral Mountain into Smash. And I especially really love the contrast between the storminess over here with Gruntilda and the daylight and bright colors everywhere else. So I kind of wanted to have that for sure where we have that clash in the painting. And originally when I sketched this, I kind of wanted um, Throw Mountain and then this cliff face here to kind of be the main two focal points. And everything else I kind of just made it dim, fade away into some fog, but it just didn't look right. Because I like the level design so much of Banjo-Kazooie, it just felt like it was missing something. So I erased what I had and kind of tried to roughly sketch in the back cliff face here and then some of the yellow flowers and the pathways around the Spiral Mountain, just to kind of bring those things back because it really needed them. But now that I have my sketch done, I'm going to kind of bring this to the canvas. I will be painting the sky first like always, but I wanna make sure that I know where everything else is sitting first so I'm not wasting time painting too far down on the canvas. It'll also help me figure out exactly where this divide between the daylight and the stormy sky is going to be. This is very much a rough sketch, just trying to get the pieces in place so I can start to see where they're going. Now I lightly kind of zigzag the line here to kind of represent where it's going to be the dark sky versus the bright sky. And I'm doing the bright sky first because I kind of want the dark storm clouds to kind of curve and curl onto the bright sky. And for that bright sky, I have two different blues, a dark one for the top and a light one for the horizon here. And the dark one is a lot of ultramarine blue with a little bit of titanium white. And then the light one is the same thing, but it just has a lot more titanium white. This is kind of dark, so I'm just going to add some white onto my brush and start from the bottom and then bring that up here into this blue. Between Smash Brothers and the original game, there's a lot of different material to draw from to kind of create this image. Now, I do really like all of the detail from the Smash Brothers stage. I think they did a really good job kind of bringing that all together and reimagining it and making it feel like a modern version of the original. So I am going to draw a lot from the Smash Brothers stage, um, in particular, starting here with the sky. Um, there's some clouds in the Smash stage that are very small towards the horizon and they get bigger going towards the top of the sky. And that's how you would see it in nature. The further away a cloud is, the smaller it's going to be. And as they get down this way, they are farther away, so they will be small. And to kind of fill those in, I'm going to kind of tap them in with a paintbrush. And I'm starting with a shadow color. And my shadow color is my deepest blue from up here. But as I need it, um, if I need it to be darker, I can add in some Doxine purple, some neutral gray. I can add some white to lighten it up if I want to. And then once I do that shadow color, I can use more and more titanium white until I have those highlights for the clouds. The base of the dark sky is a desaturated dark blue. So I took some of the blue from the bright side, added some orange, some black, until it kind of had this dark blue jean color. And I'm going to fill in all of this sky over here with this, but the boundary between the two isn't a line, it isn't a gradient. I kind of want to have these like tendrils where it's just kind of reaching out into the daylight, where it's encroaching upon its territory. So I'm going to fill this all in with a dark blue and then work on this border between the two. Thank you. 
I'm working on the stormy part, and after I finished all that dark blue, I took some black and kind of just tapped it in to bring in some shadow areas. And then I went back into the blue and started to bring in these blue clouds here. And I just kept working lighter and lighter into white until you could start to see just some of the tips of them. Tapping in the same motion, the same way I did these clouds, but with blues going into light blue. And then I brought in some purple because there's some hints of purple in there. And next I'm going to do the same thing with a little bit of green, just because there's hints of green in that storm cloud too. I spent some time trying to get the cliff faces back here set. I need to do those before I can do this cliff face or Spiral Mountain itself. I want to have those all the way done so I'm not trying to go along the edges trying to paint very carefully. So I'm doing a black background first that can kind of sit as my base color and then I can start to build some of the browns from the rocks on top. Spiral Mountain's going to have gray rocks just so it stands out, um, kind of like the Smash Brothers stage, but the browns are coming from the original game just to kind of make them look different so you're not getting confused at what you're looking at here in the middle. The texture of these rock faces is going to be put on by a palette knife. And the way I'm doing the color is I'm taking some burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and titan buff. And I can just take little bits of each color and kind of make a nice little smear of colors as I see fit. Like if I want it a little bit lighter, I can add some titan buff. And then I have like a nice little variety of these different browns. And then with it on my palette knife, I can go and kind of scrape it here onto the surface. cliff face done I can continue to work down this way um, or I can work on top where this grass is and I've marked that in green just to fill it in with a dark green color and I still have a lot of it so I'm going to go ahead and add in the green um, kind of in front of the peninsula part here and then up this hill just to mark that in too while I have some on my palette. I use chalk to kind of draw in the texture for both the field and the quarry area. Just to remind myself that this one is kind of like rocks and just dirt texture, whereas this has these very regular furrows where you would be planting seeds. There's kind of the peaks and the valleys. So all of the peaks are going to be a bit lighter because they're going to catch the sunlight and then they're going to cast a shadow down into the valley. So it's going to kind of repeat on each one of these lines where it's lighter and then it'll be darker on the other side.
Now that these are done, you can definitely see the texture difference between the quarry and the field. These are the repeating lines, and then I thought about how flagstones fit together in the ground and kind of went with that. Um, now that the texture itself is done, I need to add some value because I'm kind of thinking about how this is going to cast just a little bit of a shadow down in here. So once this is dry, I can just use some shading gray and kind of use that in this area just to darken up this side of the quarry. This cliff face is the same as these ones back here, but instead of thinking in these little small motions for these tiny rocks, I was thinking a lot bigger here. So I was putting down big swipes of color trying to make these rocks look a lot bigger and a lot closer. But with all of that done, I thought about how the quarry looked a little bit strange. I think it's just tilted too much this way, and I need to kind of bring it back this way, so you're only really seeing kind of the top of it. I brought some of the grass with my chalk up here, and as I start to mark in these other colors, I'm just gonna kind of fill that in here, just to kind of make it look like it's tilting back, and it's flat instead of angled. Um, that means this little hill had to move up a little bit, and then I spent some time drawing in all of the other base area. Still ignoring Spiral Mountain and Gruntilda's face, um, leaving that for last, but I want to block in all of this with a base color first, just to get that color there, and then I can start to add some more detail. Color blocking in a canvas is good for two reasons. First, it allows me to use white chalk pastel, which I much prefer to using over any of my other colors. It erases a lot cleaner and it doesn't change the color of the paint as much as the other ones do. So now that this is all done, I can use this to work on drawing in everything to make sure I'm happy with the placement and kind of adjusting what's here already. The second reason is you can kind of see some of these little white dots that show up underneath the paint. What that is is the canvas behind the paint. When I'm painting, the texture of the canvas will trap air and kind of create this little pocket of air underneath the paint. And as it's drying, that's going to pop and leave a little tiny hole where you can see the canvas behind it. When I'm doing like something like this, it's a bit harder to sit there and make sure I focus paint on that area, trying to make sure I have all of these covered because personally I don't like how it looks. Now that this is here, as I'm working and doing my detail for like the water or the grass, I can kind of focus my attention to these little areas where there's a lot of little white marks and make sure I fill those in as I'm doing the value, as I'm doing the texture for those areas. But like I said, now that this is done, I can keep moving on and work on using my chalk pastel and like fixing some of these little areas where the canvas is showing through. And the first one I'm going to do is the path. Because I want the grass to kind of sit on top of the path in some areas, I need to do that path first. So I'm taking the lighter colors from the stone to kind of keep this little theme going of color, and I'm going to fill in the path with that and kind of do a little bit of a dappled motion, trying to show kind of the gravel texture and showing something other than just a solid color there for the path.
I had started to work on the grass, kind of working in this area and then all the way around the field. But as I worked on that, I thought about how I wanted this done first because I kind of want the grass to kind of hang over it a little bit on the edge. So I took my chalk and drew in all of these stones here because they are stacked intentionally. They're not naturally made like this. So I'm going to use all of these same colors, um, starting with some of the darker ones and filling in all of these shapes that I've made. And then I'm going to go into lighter and lighter colors, kind of working on making these each look like stone and then the space in between is going to stay black. So I was painting the grass um, similar to how I did it up here with these same colors, but just a bit more texture because it's closer. Um, and I thought about how much time I was wasting filling in all this grass all the way up around here because I knew Spiral Mountain was going to be somewhere here on the canvas. And I was wasting time trying to fill this all in. So I decided I would draw it in a chalk and then fill it in with some base colors. And black was a good choice for the vertical pieces because that was my background color for these other rock faces. Um, so I did that in black and then I thought about how these parts are gonna end up different but I couldn't paint them in black too or I would lose these lines I drew. So I just decided to use a paint marker in white and fill that in that way. Later of course it'll change colors but white was a good just thing I had lying around that I could fill that in. But I kind of miss um, some of the stuff I did back here and it's kind of sad to me that it's gotten covered up, but it's neat that it's in the video so you guys can see that this rock wall was all the way complete and that this field actually did come all the way here behind Sparrow Mountain. But it's going to save me a lot of time now that this is blocked in, filling in the rest of this grass and the water especially.
the rocks that go around the edge of the water here, I'm doing the same way I did this rock wall back here. I liked the texture of it so much and I thought it would be a good fit down here. So just like before, I drew it all in in chalk first and then I used some burnt umber to fill in all of those rocks. Now that that's done, the white chalk has kind of um, lightened up the grout in between and I want that to be a darker black. So now that the chalk has been erased, I'm going to take some shading gray and go over all of it just to darken it all up. That will hide all of this extra chalk and kind of seal it in. And it will also darken up this burnt umber so I can start to build the lighter layers of rock on top. While that's drying, I can start to work on these flowers. I had originally blocked them in yellow because it's a yellow field of flowers, and I was looking at it and thinking about different ways I could paint it, and I decided I would start with a darker green. So I took my dark green from the grass and filled in all of those flower fields back here, and then I did some tests in my sketchbook. Um, this was my first one where I just kind of tapped on different yellow colors to be the flowers. And then down here, I did it on top of a solid green field. And this one is like very specific dots where I've put all these different dots to be all of these different flowers. And this one was kind of like this, but just on top of green. And I really like how this turned out, thinking about how the far away ones are gonna be tiny dots and the closer ones will be bigger dots. So I'm gonna go this route for the flowers. And now that this is dark green, I can start to build in some of these, starting with my darker yellows and kind of brown yellows, starting to tap in some flowers. And then I can keep going yellower and lighter yellow until I'm happy with how those flowers look. So I just finished doing these two areas of the canvas, the yellow flowers and the rock face. And I did this just like I did this one up here um, because I like how this turned out. And it also gives a good flow to the canvas by bringing it through here. Um, it's providing some unity to it to bring it this way. And I did it the same exact way. I drew in my shapes, I filled them in a solid color. Um, I used some burnt umber and burnt sienna on a brush and I kind of just dry brushed it on. That's where you don't have a whole lot of paint on your brush and you just kind of scrub it in all of the areas very quickly without thinking. So that's why there's some areas that have a bit more of it and there's some that don't. I'm just doing it very quick, just quick getting it on the canvas with very, very little paint on the brush just to give it that texture. Um, each rock also gets a little bit of a highlight towards the top where the sun would catch it. It helps it stand out from the background. Um, so that's kind of how I did these rocks. As for the flowers, I looked at different fields um, of different crops that have yellow flowers and um, like tulips and wheat to kind of see how it builds on itself in space. So I just did tiny little dots for all of this. The dots are very small back here and they get a lot bigger up here. And I did some yellow ochre dots. Um, I started with a dark green base. I did uh, light yellow dots, lighter yellow, and then very light yellow dots, um, just to kind of build this whole space in. And as I was working, I kind of thought, oh, here's a green space, and I would do a yellow dot. Here's a green space, yellow dot, just to kind of try and fill most of that in, because I don't want to see a lot of that green after I'm done. 
Um, and then once I finished that, it needed to kind of have this darkness on the edge just to kind of set it there in the grass. So I just used some shading gray right along this edge just to kind of sit it there. I also put some back here in the rock because when the flowers kind of go around those areas, they're gonna shade the flowers there and make them darker. So I just used some shading gray in those areas to darken up that space. But now that that's all done, I think this line is very awkward. It's a very harsh line between the grass and the rocks. So I'm gonna use some greens and kind of just soften this edge just so it looks more natural. I started by putting some cyan down for the water and I want the rest of it to be transparent because I want you to be able to see these rocks but I want them to look like they're underneath the water. So I'm going to start by taking this Thalo Blue Green Shade which is a transparent paint and I'm going to put it on my palette and I'm going to mix it with some orange to make kind of a transparent blue color. But this on its own is too bright. It doesn't match anything else in the painting because of how bright it is. So that orange is gonna kind of help bring that intensity down. And then to lighten it, I'm gonna use zinc white, which is a transparent white. And then if it's still too opaque, I can add some glazing liquid. It's better to be more transparent and less opaque um, for the step because I can always do more layers to make it more opaque. I can't kind of subtract that because once I paint over these rocks, they're going to be painted over and I can't get them back unless I repaint them myself. So I wanna be more transparent and do layers if I have to versus going too opaque and then losing everything. I finished up the water by using a little bit of light blue on the edge to make a water line. I also did the fence, um, starting with black and then using some of my same browns to kind of just do these little vertical pieces back here. Um, and the last things are my foreground or my focus of the painting, which is Granny's face, the bridge, and then Spiral Mountain. So I'm going to be doing the stone first on Spiral Mountain, and I'm doing the same technique I did for this stone with my palette knife, but instead of these sandy tan colors, I'm going to go a little bit more gray, a little bit more into a less orangey brown color, just to make it stand out from everything else. I don't want it to blend in where it runs into this stone here. I need it to stand out and be the focus of the entire piece. So I'm going to start with some of my darker browns and mix a little bit of gray into them, just to make them a little more neutral and a little less orange.
The last part of Spiral Mountain to fill in was the green. Now there's some things I had to think about when I decided on a texture and the colors I wanted to use. For example, right here where this green kind of touches all of these other greens. I needed to change it somehow, otherwise they would look like they're the same and they were connected. So I decided to go a bit lighter with this part and also a different texture. The grass down here are these long pieces, whereas the grass up here is just kind of um, tapped in like the grass I did back here. That way it has this different texture and this different color, so when you look at it, you can tell that they're different parts. Um, so the same kind of goes for the top part here and then the part that goes down the side of the rock. I kept the part that goes down the side darker and then the part on the top lighter because if you think about it, the sun is going to hit here first and then the part that goes down the side isn't going to get as much sun. So this part is lighter and then the part that goes down is darker. I also used some shading gray to give some shadow to that kind of hanging grass on the stone. That way it's casting that down here. Um, so now that that's done, I need to do um, Gruntilda's head over here in the stone. So I'm going to be doing that with chalk first and then filling in the paint. And I need to do that before I do the bridge because otherwise I'm not exactly sure where her mouth is going to be for the bridge to meet up with that. If I have the bridge just coming off this way, I have to kind of base that on where her face is going. But if I put her face here, it's a lot easier for me to do that first and then figure out exactly where the bridge is going to be because then it can move. If I put that down first, then the bridge can't move, it's there permanently. So I'm going to draw this in and then block it in with some base colors. It's taken a bit to get this head right, and this is the most important thing. This is the focal point of the entire piece. So it's important that it's right. So I spent a lot of time drawing it, and I started with it until I was happy, and then I noticed it was too small. So I made it bigger, and then I was finally happy with it. And I marked it in with a paint marker just to kind of make it permanent here on the canvas. And now I'm going to start to fill things in. And because it's so dark, I'm going to start by filling it in solid black first. Now I'm doing this in pieces because if I filled in everything solid black, you would lose like the line of the mouth and the line of the nose. So I have to do this in chunks. And I'm going to start with like the skin part first because it takes up so much room. After I have that filled in black and then I start to do the color and the value with it, then it'll be easier to see these other pieces and they're really not connected so I can kind of work on them all at once. So I'm starting with the face, marking it in and solid black first, and then we'll start to add some of the green and some of the rock texture.
Working on this face has been very tough. I've done it a few times now, um, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out now. The first time I used the palette knife, because it's stone, so I wanted to keep doing the stone with the palette knife, and I didn't like how it looked. So I took some shade in gray, and I took some colors on a brush, and tried to bring in some detail and value to that. And I didn't like how that looked. So I decided to kind of move on, work on the mouth, work on the eyes, work on the top of the hat, and it started to come together. So I decided to try one more time on the face with the knife. So I filled it in black again, and then I started to bring back in the greens, and it started to come together. I was thinking about how like this comes down, so the knife should come down here, and the knife should come out this way, and then down for the nose. And that really helped. But I think the thing that really helped the most was bringing in the shading gray on this rock. This area is kind of like a black hole. All the light gets sucked in and it's very dark here on the piece. So I used that shade in gray to kind of tone down all of the bright rocks that were in here, and that really helped bring this area together. Now the green also kind of cast a glow on the stone around it, so I'm going to take some of my greens, use some glazing liquid to make a glaze, and kind of go over some of this area just to give it a hint of green so it kind of has that glow from the rest of the face. I still have to do the teeth and the top of the hat and the emeralds, but I think I'm going to work on that green for now. I really want the eyes to stand out, so I need to use a color that I haven't used on this painting, like phthalo green yellow. So this color is more of like a bold or a royal green compared to some of these greens I have in here, which have a bit more of a natural feel. So I've mixed a little bit of this with some black, and I'm going to go on this um, little gemstone hexagon shape and kind of do a crescent moon in this bottom right corner. And I'm gonna do that with the right one too. And then after I have this in here, I can start to mix um, some of this phthalo green with some white and fill in the rest of this gemstone, kind of blending that little crescent moon into the rest of it. And then once I have that done, that's my base. And then I can mix it with even more white to do the highlights on the top left facet. And then I can use that highlight color to draw in the rest of the facets so they kind of have this 3D effect here on this eyeball. And we're done! We have Spiral Mountain from Banjo-Kazooie. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.